Israel is at war with Hamas. In this episode, we'll talk about how that will impact the global economy. Will it go into a recession? Will Australia be affected? How will Australian house prices be impacted by virtue of this conflict's impact on oil, on the FX rate of the USD versus Australian dollar, how geopolitical tensions and oil corridors may impact and exacerbate our own housing shortage. There's so much to talk about, but before we carry on, I just want to say that our deepest love and prayers are with the victims, those innocent victims on both sides of the conflict. Let's go. So quick recap, this is the Middle East, as you can see. This right here, my friends, is the Gaza Strip, which is the home of Hamas the government of this part of Palestine. And I should say, I'm not a geopolitical expert, but I'm giving you a bit of background. This is obviously Israel. And here are its neighbors in terms of West Bank, which is also occupied by Israel, but given to the Palestinian people. And if we zoom out Lebanon, now you notice that the Australian government just came out and said, any Australians, please don't go to Lebanon. Any Australians that are in Lebanon, please come out of Lebanon. Why are they saying that? Is because there is a terrorist group called Hezbollah, which has already been involved in the conflict. And so potentially what we'll have is Israel on a front into Gaza, on a front into the West Bank, and potentially in a front, a war front, into Lebanon. Now, if I zoom out and actually get back to economics, something that I'm good at is this is Iraq, which we all know, and this is Iran. And so it's like, why are we talking about Iran? That's like a world away from Israel, right? Well, in some sense it is, and in another sense it isn't. There is a lot of allegation and speculation, and I'm not going to say whether it's true or not, that's beyond my pay grade, that Iran actually funded Okay, that actually they funded Hamas in terms of their airstrikes and ground offensive through this border into Israeli territory, places like Ashkelon. Okay, now if this war further extends, if this war gets really heated and a lot of civilians in the Gaza Strip are very, you know, very unfortunately affected, then what we might have is Iran who may or may not be backing Hezbollah, may or may not be backing Hamas, actually enter into the war equation. Now, without going too much into geopolitics, the reason I'm bringing all of this up is because if Iran doesn't like what they see in Palestine, they may try to conflict and they may try to squeeze the West in the way that they know best. And what is that best way? It is right here through the Strait of Hormuz. What does that mean? The Strait of Hormuz is the biggest single oil corridor for seaborne oil exports out of the Middle East. They come from a lot of these areas through this little strait. And there is speculation that Iran can and will simply block a lot of those thoroughfares and a lot of those exports. And if that happens, because it can do that, then what happens is potentially a disaster. 37% of the world's oil exports that are seaborne go through this strait of Hormuz and if Iran actually blocks it or affects it in any way then that will have a big impact on oil prices and therefore global economy. Let's dig into that. So here's a chart that shares how geopolitical events have affected oil prices back when they happened and over time after the event. Okay, so you've got the Gulf War where basically the US went in and protected Kuwait, once again a huge reservoir of oil from Iraqi dominance. This was in 1990 and you could see as soon as that war broke out, oil prices, short-term impact of various geopolitical political events on Brent prices, oil prices, this blue just shot up, like went up a lot, 25% in five days. Like that is 
ridiculous. Like, that's a lot. And it continued to have an impact. The Arab Spring, I won't go into the definitions of diff different wars, but just to give you a context, December 10, that had some impact, and then it plateaued. The Russian invasion of Ukraine, you know, we thought that would have a big impact. It kind of had an impact in the short term, but it's been up and down since that time. A lot of the exports out of Russia have made their way through back channels, through India and China and other places. They've made it to the West. All right, so there's been a way that the Kremlin has exported and made money from their resources. The Iraqi invasion, that took oil prices down. This was in 2003, post-September 11. Why did that happen? Because oil prices are a product of both consumer sentiment and business sentiment. If there's a war, people don't invest money. Like Businesses don't produce capital expenditure, therefore there's less demand for oil. But if these conflicts happen in the Middle East, there's a risk, like I just shared with Iran, of oil being artificially suppressed. And therefore, less supply of oil means that prices go up. So it's not clear exactly how any geopolitical tensions, Lebanon war, 9-11 attacks, have a positive or negative impact on oil. But what we can see is those that are directly related to the heart of where oil resides, like Kuwait, like the Gulf War, actually has a short-term impact upwards in oil prices, which is a negative thing for the global economy. But will this cause a global recession? Here's an updated view from the International Monetary Fund, the IMF. This was just updated a few days ago. So this is post the invasion of Israel or Palestine, you could say, into each other's territories. So this is saying that Australia, in terms of its GDP revision, has been revised downwards a little bit. But the 2023 revised GDP as an absolute level is still between 1 and 2%. It's 1.5%. Canada has been revised upwards a little bit, and that's still likely to grow as an economy. The United States has been revised down 0.5%, but it's still likely to grow 2.1%. So just to get to the conclusion, the IMF which traditionally hasn't been so accurate. It always kind of overdoes it, then pairs it back, then overdoes it again, pairs it back, much like any prediction of global economies. It's saying that there's no global recession coming despite what has just happened in Israel, in Palestine. All of these countries, except for Germany and except for Sweden, are all showing green. However, a lot of them have been pared back in terms of expectation, but it's still positive growth territory. So I don't think, according to this data, we're actually entering into this really scary global recession that perhaps those of us who are uneducated may be easily cajoled into thinking due to the media and its fear-mongering. Now let's talk about interest rates and foreign exchange. You know, a lot of people are saying, hey, in Australia, our foreign exchange, our value of the Australian dollar has been deteriorating versus the US. And that's true. It's hovering between 60 cents and 65 cents USD for a long time. And it's sort of coming down. And they're saying, well, that means that we have to continue increasing interest rates because the more that the Australian dollar devalues, the more we import inflation. Our dollar is worth less and less. Therefore, that same thing we're buying is becoming more expensive from overseas. That's how the logic goes. But what Westpac has suggested, and this is based on a consensus view of what each central bank is likely to do, is that the Fed, this red line, is likely to reduce their interest rate over the next 12 to 18 months, the most and the quickest. Okay, so this red line is expected to go down because their economy, like we just saw on the previous chart, is one of the US is one of the healthiest economies in the world. GDP expected to be 2.1. And that's not boom time, so it's much better than most other people. Now you compare that with this yellow, the RBA, and that's basically flat all the way to the end of next year. So what happens, Economics 101, as interest rates start to fall? this year potentially or early next year in the US, then the appetite to buy US dollars and invest in US denominated bonds reduces. Therefore, there's an outflow of money from the US 
and relatively speaking, the US dollar devalues versus the Australian dollar. The Australian dollar increases its value from potentially 60 to 65 cents to potentially 65 to 70, maybe even up to 75. What that means is that now we're no longer importing inflation. In fact, everything is becoming cheaper. We're, we're an importing economy, like we import a lot of things. We import more than we export if you take away iron ore, okay? So we really depend on China and other places around the world. So this makes a big difference in terms of lowering our inflation. And that means that the interest rates can also start coming down in Australia, which in turn means that our economy can be further bolstered and mitigate the negative impacts that oil might have on our local economy. Because when oil gets more expensive and it's likely to happen in the short term, as I shared with you in the chart earlier, that is a dampener in economy. We need oil for almost everything we produce locally and internationally. So when oil goes up, global economies, production of cars and shipping and transport and everything slowly comes down because everything becomes just more expensive. There's a lot going on, but I do want to take you through the cost to build a new house in Australia. Why is that relevant to this video? It's because oil energy is a huge input to producing a home, like naturally, right? If you want wood, if you want steel to cut wood, to harvest wood to produce steel, you need energy, you need oil, you need combustion engines to do anything in a house, to produce a house, to build it, you need energy, you need oil to transport those materials as well as build them in the first place. Now that is going to mean with oil going up in value that the cost to build a house will further go up. Since 2001, the cost of developing a new house in Australia has increased 6.1% per annum, accelerating to 8% per annum since June 2019 with the COVID bottlenecks and shipping out of Shanghai and everything like that. What does that mean? It means that house prices, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on which side of the equation you are, are likely to continue to accelerate in Australia, even if you think a massive global recession is coming and you make your investing and economic decisions based on demand, okay, global demand, local demand, the fact is that supply is further constricting because as oil increases in price, so do the cost of building materials, transport, so does the cost of building a new house. It's already been going up since 2001. So if it's accelerating to 8% and it could increase to 9 or 10%, that means that structurally, regardless of demand, Structurally, the value of Australian house prices over the medium and long term has to go up 8 to 10 percent. That means Australian house prices must go up. Big statement. I know it's not a popular statement amongst some people, but this is how the economy works. This is reality. Regardless of global demand, recession or not, from a supply side, a shock, an oil shock, if there is, or even just a, a medium term increase in oil, that causes further house price increases here in Australia. And that's not a good thing because Australian dwelling approvals or those councils, the amount of new houses approved to be built is already going down. So this is demand from developers. Hey, I'm a developer. I want to carve out this piece of land and build four townhouses. Or I want to carve out this piece of land and build three quarter acre blocks, whatever it is. That demand from developers is going down just because of the cost of building a new house. It's just not economically feasible, commercially feasible. So demand for new houses from developers is going down. Therefore, new supply and new starts will be going down. It's just like a perfect storm for Australian house prices, which isn't a great thing but it does mean Australian house prices go up so once again which side of the equation are you on in conclusion the Israel Palestine war is not going to lead to a global recession but it could have a short-term impact on oil prices short to medium where oil prices go up that means that local housing starts and the housing shortage will become significantly worse. Couple that with the fact that our FX rate is about to improve with the US dollar likely to devalue over the next 12 months. And therefore, interest rates here are going to come down because inflation is no longer going to be as much of a problem. We won't import as much inflation. So interest rates go down. And what does that do for the demand side of housing? it goes up. 
So demand for housing goes up, supply for housing goes down. You be the decision maker of your own finances. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, turn the notification bell on, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below as well. Once again, our heartfelt prayers and thoughts and well wishes go out to all the innocent victims on all sides of war. War is never good. And here I have hopefully given you an economic lens to it. My name is PK. I'll see you next time.